chapter 1. Nothing wrong with reading the Bible. Amen. Leviticus 6, 12 through 13 reads as thus, And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every other week. Every other day. Every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Verse 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Let's read the last part together. It shall never go out. Mm -hmm. Genesis 8. Genesis 8 verse 20 through 21. And Noah builded the altar unto the Lord. And he took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor or a sweet aroma, a fragrance. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living, everything living as I have done. Now, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. It reads as thus, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Last one, Malachi chapter 1. Verse 11 through 13. From the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye have profaned it in that ye say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it saith the Lord of hosts, and ye have brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick, and thus ye brought an offering, should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord. Now, we're going to get to this into, in the English language, or modern English language, I should say. Last week we talked about repair the altar, rebuild your life. This week, we're going to talk about understanding the power of an altar. Understanding the power of an altar. Father, we thank you for your word. Let it come forth in clarity, revelation, and power. In Jesus' name, and all that agree with that said, Amen. as you be seated in his presence, to understand the power of an altar, thank God for you who are here in the flesh. We Let's also thank God for you who are watching online. We certainly want you to be here with us. And the church said, Amen. Amen. There are three aspects to understanding the power of an altar. Number one, altars are places where sacrifices are made. And I'm not going to get go over everything we covered last week. You can go on Facebook or on YouTube and you can uh, hear that message. I mean, enjoy it last week. Yeah. Altars are places where sacrifices are made. Altars are places where sacrifices are made. Number two, altars are portals or doorways in the spiritual realm. 
altars, altars are portals or doorways in the spiritual realm. And number three, altars are a place of fire and encounters with God. Altars are a place of fire and encounters with God. Number one, altars are places where sacrifices are made. The fire of God fell upon the altar only after it was prepared the way the Lord commanded it. You cannot worship God the way you want to and expect him to back that up. Amen. God backs up what he orders. Amen. Amen. The priests were in charge of gathering the wood every morning to keep the fire burning. They were to take that wood and put it upon the altar. This means that if you are spiritually dry, if you have no fervency, if you have become indifferent, you and only you have the ability to change it. Let the church say amen. amen. Wood represents humanity. When we lay wood on the altar daily, it represents us being living sacrifices unto him. Meaning we are turned all the way over to death, but yet still live through Christ. Amen. Paul said, I am dead, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. Noah built an altar in Genesis 8, 21. And when he built it, God smelled a sweet smelling savor and a sweet fragrance. And he said, I'm not going to curse the ground anymore. Because of what just took place. Now here's what you have to understand. What stench or what aroma is coming up out of America to him? What fragrance is ascending? We're not talking about from the world. We're talking about from the church. What aroma has been ascending from the lives of of those in the body of Christ. Now, I want to go back to something we just read. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. But I want to read it out of the Message Bible. Now, as I read through it this time, I want you to understand something very clearly. When Paul is talking about what's going to come and to take place, he's not talking to the world. Sinners do what sinners do because they don't know Jesus. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They do what they do. But believers, now that's a different story. So when he's talking here, he's not talking to the world. He's addressing the church. Listen, he says, don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. And as the end approaches, tell me if you see this going on, let alone in yourself. People are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, Dog eat dog, unbending, slanderers, impulsively wild. How about carjackings? Y'all saw what happened, that man, he was a Vietnam vet. And, they, and the young people, one was 17 years old, shoved him, caused the man to have a heart attack and die. Impulsively wild, savage, cynical, treacherous. Ruthless. I thought we were supposed to have the love of Jesus in us. Amen. Listen. Bloated windbags. Addicted to lust and allergic to God. Amen. They'll make a show of religion. But behind the scenes, they're animals. Stay clear of these people. Now listen to Malachi chapter 1. Verse 11 through 13, I'm also going to, realize, I'm going to read it out of the, uh, I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. But 
Notice how God felt about the offerings his people were giving him, which had this same state of mind. Listen to God's response out of the Message Bible. Malachi chapter 1, 11 through 13. I am honored all over the world. And there are people who know how to worship me all over the world, who honor me by bringing their best to me. They're saying it everywhere. God is greater. This is God of the angel armies. All except you. Instead of honoring me, you profane me. You profane me when you say, worship is not important. And what we bring to worship is of no account. And when you say, I'm bored, this doesn't do anything for me. You act so superior, sticking your noses up, to, up in the air, acting superior to me, the God of the angel armies. Amen. And when you do offer something to me, it's a hand-me-down or broken or useless. Do you think I'm going to accept it? This is God speaking to you. Amen. This is God speaking to our generation. Yes, yes. We offer up to God and give him parts of our lives that are hand-me-down. Let me say it another way. Where God is the fifth priority yes. in our lives. And we expect him to receive it. I hear people say this. <laughs> but wait a minute. The blood of Jesus, isn't it enough to cover me? Won't God just apply the blood and listen, yes and no. Yes, it is enough to cover you, but only if you apply it. Amen. One of my favorite evangelists. Evangelist Reinhard Bunke went to be with the Lord a few, two, three years ago. And I'll never forget him, several stories, I'll never forget that he shared. But he stated one day he was invited to come on this television program. And they said, we want you to come and talk about religion. And so he said he'll, he'll come on there. But he didn't know that the other person who they had invited was an atheist. So he says, sound like somebody trying to pick a fight. So he goes to the interview and the man just goes and just jumps into Reinhardt and he says, Evangelist Bunky, you preach all over the world that there is still power in the blood of Jesus. He said, you, sir, are wrong. He said, the reason why you are wrong is because if Jesus came 2,000 years ago and his blood had power in it, the world is in a worse place now than it was 2,000 years ago. Therefore, there is no more power in the blood. He sat up on the edge of his seat. He said, sir, before you go, you know how Bucky talk. Before you go any further, may I respond? <laughs> he said, sir, are you aware of the power of soap? He said, why, of course. He said, what you need to understand is soap has the power to make you clean but only if you apply it. Yeah. He said, you can work in a soap factory. <laughs> you can be surrounded by soap eight hours a day, but just because you are surrounded by soap, it will not make you clean. He said, you have to reach out 
and grab the soap with your hand and apply it everywhere. He said in the same way you have to apply the blood of Jesus to every part of your life and you have to do it over and over and over again. The atheist sat back in his chair. He said, oh, you are different. <laughs> he said, how so? He said, it appears that the other evangelists that I have challenged, they are amateurs, but you are a professional. He said, I'm not a professional. He said, what I am is living proof of the power of the blood of Jesus. And when he said after the interview was over, he was walking to the parking garage and he was getting ready to get in his car and he felt a tap on his shoulder. He looked around, guess who it was? His atheist. Amen. He said, sir, would you please pray for me that I can receive Hallelujah. Jesus? Hallelujah! Amen. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Amen. By being a living sacrifice, we are being given all the way over to death, but yet still live. Without death, there can be no resurrection. Hallelujah. When I die to myself, it is Christ living through me, talking through me, walking through me, touching through me, loving through me, healing through me, praying through me. Hmm. Number two, is this making sense? Say this with me. Say altars are portals in the spiritual realm. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, I'm going to read 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 10. Read it when you get home. It says this. <clears throat> 1 Samuel chapter 1, I mean chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 10. I'm reading out of the message Bible. The boy Samuel was serving under e uh, serving God under Eli's direction. This was a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. Verse 10. Then God came out and stood because he was calling Samuel. And Samuel said, Lord, if it's you, oh, he said, Lord, speak for your servant hears. And in verse 10, the Bible said, Samuel, that, that the Bible says, God came and stood. <laughs> The reason why I put the emphasis on he came and stood is because it wasn't just God's I'm not present voice coming. No, he stepped through time <laughs> and came and stood to speak to Samuel. Somebody say amen. amen. Samuel continually ministered unto the Lord and departed not out of the temple and the Lord walked out from the Holy of Holies because in the Ark of the Covenant it was contained at that particular time the presence of God. So he came and walked out and stood and talked with him. There was another young man by the name of Joshua who, who, who was a, the servant and minister of Moses. And there would be times when God would come down in the tabernacle and Moses would go and talk with the Lord and Moses would leave. But the Bible said Joshua did not leave from the temple. Why is that important? Because both men had encounters with God that were pivotal to influence in their generation. This new generation that has been foreign to our God is running straight on a collision course for an encounter with him where he's about to introduce himself and say I am the God of your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob amen. somebody say amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear a lot of preachers preaching a lot of good things and I'm not trying to bash them how to love your neighbor how to love your family how to have integrity don't be a person that lies. That's nice. But I want to ask a question. How can we teach people about having the character of God if they have not first been introduced to that God with that character? Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you need an experience with Jesus. You need an experience with Jesus. 
Jesus. Character doesn't just come Jesus. from doing good things, Amen. but emanates for out of knowing who Jesus is. We are to move, we must move from religion to relationship Amen. or to move from the shadow to the substance. Now, let me ask you a question. Tell me if you notice the difference between the following. Now, if somebody were to say, where should I go on vacation? I'm considering going to Las Vegas, Nevada for my vacation. Now, if I heard you say that, and I say, I'm going to try to persuade you to go to Vegas, but I've never been there. I've seen the commercial. I've read the brochure. I've watched stuff online. I've watched videos. I can tell you I've seen how they have a roller coaster ride. I've seen how they have some of these TV, famous TV chefs. So evidently they must have real nice restaurants. I can say it looks like they're building more towards the whole family and not just gambling and getting drunk, but it looks like they're trying to do something for everybody, and I believe you would have a nice time. That sound okay. Now let me put on my hat as somebody who's been there. Now tell me if you notice this. When we got out the car, the bellman ran up to try to carry our bags to go inside. When we walked in the lobby of the Venetian Hotel, we were floored by the architecture. It was so beautiful and so tall, it felt like we was in a palace. When we went to our room, it was so luxurious. We went from, they had this long hallway, and they got this bathroom with the, the, the my God, the tub was so big I could fit in it. It had marble all around these beautiful showers my jesus thank you sir and even when you walk down into the sunken living room you have such a beautiful view of the city we could see the construction and the mountains of this place called the spear and oh my goodness it was awesome uh, they have over 39 restaurants and over 120 shopping stores in the hotel where we stayed at. My God, we went to Emeril Lagasse's restaurant, Del Monaco's, and I had a steak that was very expensive, but Brother Doug, it was the most tasty piece of flesh I've ever had in my life. <laughs> the second description sounds a whole lot different than the first. Yeah. You could feel it, couldn't you? You could see it, couldn't you? Because I was conveying, not what I read, not what I heard, but I conveyed my experience. You want to know why people are having such a hard time conveying the reality of Christ? Because they may not know him. Amen. Let the church say amen. Well, pastor, I don't know scriptures. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't know how to talk to people about Jesus. Just tell them what he, what he did for you. Amen. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There was a time in this nation. He was talking about portals or doorways. See, when you have an experience with Jesus and you begin to share to others what happens your mouth your life Amen. becomes a doorway that the Holy Spirit begins to flow through so that people can experience the reality of who he really is Amen. listen there was a point in time now, yes, we, we still do it. It's not foreign to us. But the many people in this generation, <laughs> they don't understand what an altar call is. Many of us, if you grew up in church, 
You, you remember, it didn't even matter what denomination of church that you came from. Nobody closed the service without having an altar call. And people's hearts would be open when they came down to the front. And God would meet them here. Yes. The presence of God would change in the service. Yes. Even children knew you don't move during the altar call. Yes. You don't go downstairs and meet your friend during the altar call. It was something going on. What? It was a portal and opening for God to come back in. Let the church say amen. 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 But see, meetings like this, coming to church... It is a portal where the heavenly hosts will come through. But here's one of the problems that we're having today. And we can't just blame this on COVID. I tell, I'm telling you, COVID revealed what was in a lot of people's hearts already. I've been noticing every, every Sunday when we've been coming to church, how many churches I pass by. Churches whose parking lots were full, not even half full now. What changed? Everybody ain't sick. Amen. Everybody ain't scared to come to church. Amen. Well, I don't have to go to church. I can worship God at home. Yes, you can. Amen. You sure can. But it's not the same. Amen. And if you really... And if you were really experiencing him on a regular basis like that, he's not going to tell you something that's different from the word. He would tell you to come to church. Amen. Just listen to some benefits, not just from what the word say, but just listen. I found this, brother, I found this unbelievable. I was studying this last night as I was watching the debacle with the Bucks and the Suns, but listen. <laughs> Listen to some of the benefits, according to the world, from attending church. NYU, New York University, says regularly attending church and participating in prayer lowers blood pressure and reduces the risk of heart attack and stroke by 20%. Amen. The National Library of Medicine says blood pressure is 40% lower for those who regularly attend worship services and participate in prayer. Amen. Watch this. Yet, those whose religious activity was only watching religious TV or watching services online or listening to the uh, programs on the radio, they actually had higher rates of blood pressure. When you go to church on a regular basis, it's proven you'll have a lower rate of depression. Amen. Your children, it's been proven they'll have better grades. Oh, amen. I'll tell you one of the reasons why. It ain't just because you come in here and the Holy Ghost get on you and you get smarter. <laughs> but here's the thing. When you come around the saints, yeah. you have a plethora and a multitude of systems that wrap around that child. Amen. You have the elders. I'm concerned about a church that don't have any senior citizens in it. Amen. We need those that are seasoned to speak Amen. into our lives. Amen. We need the wisdom of our elders. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. What happens is it presents a, a, a multitude of role models. I remember coming up in Maine Baptist Church. Deacon Mark Sanders. Deacon Hayes Phillips. It was not just the ministers who had an impact upon me. It was some of my friends' daddies. And my, some of my friends' mothers. My Sunday school teachers. Miss Barbara Waller. Who took an interest in me. And would pull me aside and tell me what was right and what was wrong. Deacon oh, my goodness, somebody say hallelujah. I could go further into that, but I won't. Last one. Altars. Altars are a place of fire and encounters with God. I'm going to read this verse and then I'll be done because we talked about it on last week. Revelation chapter 8, verse 5. It says, and the angel took the censer 
and filled it with the altar of, and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. There were voices, there were thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. There were voices, there were thunderings, there were lightnings and an earthquake. This symbolizes what is to come as the result of our working with heaven and the Holy Spirit in our prayer and intercession. Voices. What do we mean by voices? This is the amplification of the voice of the Lord. People's ears are going to start popping open and becoming open to the message of the Lord. There's going to be new voices arising. And one of the reasons why it's going to be new voices arising is because there are some people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Listen. God is the only person that can fire somebody and still use them. <laughs> i give you an example. God fired King Saul, but he still used him. Amen. And the reason why is because David wasn't ready to be king yet. Amen. Amen. You better fulfill what God wants you to do. Amen. Because if you don't, there's somebody else who will. Amen. I don't want somebody else getting the reward I'm supposed to get. Amen. Thunderings. God backing up or confirming his word or his message with signs following. Samuel prayed unto the Lord after he had told the people what God said. And after Samuel prayed, God sent thunder and rain to confirm and validate the message to God's people. This represents God's power and authority on open display. You saw this with Elijah and the prophets of Baal. All Israel saw who won. And there are going to be opportunities that God is giving his church to put on demonstration who he is. Now everything is not going to be on TV or the internet. Some things may be in your office. Some things may be in your neighborhood. Some things may be at your job. Some things may be at your house. Hallelujah. But God is going to give an opportunity for you to stand up boldly and declare who he is. And he's going to back up the word that you say. Voices, thunders, thunderings, and lightnings. Supernatural acceleration in glory. Lord, if I had time to really deal with this like I want to. Luke 10, 18. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning. In Matthew 17, uh, 2. The Bible talked about how Jesus' appearance when he went upon the mount with Peter, James, and John. His raiment was like lightning. His appearance was dramatically altered. Uh, one, one translation says uh, uh, Jesus' appearance was dramatically altered. A, a, a radiant light as bright as the sun poured from his face. And his clothing became luminescent, dazzling, light, lightning. He was transfigured before their very eyes. Who Jesus really was became known to them. And who Jesus really is is going to become known to us. Amen. And when that happens, you'll know how you really are. Amen. Because as he is, Amen. can I really go there? Go there, Pastor. You know why the religious people really got so upset with Jesus when he said that God was his father? The reason why they really got so upset was because they understood that to say God was your father, he was not just saying, I'm like him. He was saying, I'm equal with him or the same as. Amen. The Bible says Jesus counted in that robbery to be counted equal with God. 
Listen to this out of the Amplified. Have the same attitude in yourselves which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility who although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes. This is talking about you. The entire nature of deity did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. When we talk about being one with God, it's not just talking about some high degree of agreement. It's talking about being the same as. Watch this. How different would your life be if you embrace the understanding that you're not trying to be like him. You are like him Amen. now. Amen. The scripture says that talking with Jesus while Peter, James, and John were standing there, it was Moses and Elijah standing there talking with Jesus, glowing like that. And a cloud appeared and the Father spoke from there. This speaks of divine visitations and heavenly encounters that are going to accelerate now in Jesus' name. And then voices, thunderings, lightnings, and earthquakes, speaking of shaking every foundation and every system, every institution, not rooted in him. A brand new realignment and rearranging. Ezekiel 37 verse seven said, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, there was a shaking, and bones came together, bone to his bone. And, and, and listen, <laughs> Situations that have lasted for 20, 30, 80 years will be changed in 20 minutes. Amen. You thought we've seen a dramatic change in the nations now. Let me tell you something. There are some nations that are so economically prosperous and so economically superior to others. You're going to look up. And they're going to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Come on, come on. And there are some nations which are considered impoverished and quote-unquote third world. <laughs> they're going to suddenly become power brokers. It's not going to happen to every nation. But it will happen. What, I, I don't even totally understand this, but I'm telling you, there's getting ready to be such a seismic and I hate using this word because it's been so oversaturated and misapplied in the church. There's such a seismic shift. I even see nations that were once flourishing, uh, not nations, but uh, uh, colleges and universities that were once flourishing that may have 20, 30,000 some students. All of a sudden, when it's like when I looked at them in, 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 in whatever vision I was looking at, I saw them barren. I saw them clothes. I saw grass growing all up over everywhere. And it was dead and lifeless. We're going to stay on the Lord's side. Amen. And the church 